Um, thank you so much for joining us. We know this word will significantly impact your life, so let's tune in. Today we're going to continue talking about growing. Growing through fasting. How can I grow through fasting? The word grow, let's just talk about that, growing. It's the act or process of developing, increasing, advancing, expanding, improving, maturing, succeeding, multiplying. The act or, say it with me, process. There is, a, there is a process to grow. We just don't grow. If we want to grow, we must be willing to go through the process. It could be an educational process. It could be a trial or tribulation that's a process. It could be a, a time that you're in a, a wilderness. It looks like, man, no one, no one I, I feel like I'm all alone, and it's a process. But whatever process you need to go through to grow, this is what happens. Get through it and grow. And fasting, what is fasting? A time of abstaining from food or some kind of food or drink for a spiritual purpose. So this is what we've been doing on 20, for 21 days. You can start, if you haven't started to fast, you can start with us today. There's, there's four kinds of fast. One of them is a complete fast, and that means that you don't eat or drink anything. And I wouldn't recommend you do that fast more than two days because I, I looked it up. If you go four days without drinking, you could actually die. And we don't want no one dying. We want you to live this year. And second type of fast. What's the second type of fast? The second type of fast is a liquid fast. And that means that for 21 days, or you might try to shoot for seven days, or, and then do, uh, you could mix up your fast. But let's say you, you could do a fast, a liquid fast. Liquid fast would be this. It's just um, juices or, or, or water or some broth, chicken broth. And you could do that for 21 days. Another fast is a Daniel fast. And, and a Daniel fast is vegetables. And if you're a vegetarian, just don't, don't do this fast. If you already do this. So I already do that, okay? But it's going to be vegetables, salads, well, it's vegetables, and then um, and also nuts and stuff like that. You could do that with, because obviously drinks, juices, you could do that for 21 days. And then there's a, there's a partial fast, and a partial fast is a fast that you do until maybe a certain part of the day. And you say, you know what, I'll fast until 5, I'll fast until 6, and then you eat a light meal after 6. You don't go to McDonald's and Del Taco and the Taco Bell, get your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, eat all at once. You don't make a for all the and, and I said this last week, if you're gaining weight during the fast, you're not doing it right. There's something wrong, right? So... But, but what, why do we fast? Because we want to grow. We want to grow spiritually. At the end of this time, we want to have a discipline of focusing on God, studying the Word of God. We should also have a time of prayer. Prayer without fasting. Prayer, I mean, fasting without prayer is just a diet. So make sure that you have some time that you're communicating with God. Shut down 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half hour, hour a day. And spend time with God. I'm not giving you how much time you need to spend with God, but I am telling you we need to spend time with God. Whatever that is, to make sure that you're given some time where you shut down your internet, you, you no YouTube, no Instagram, and just shut down and let's just hear from God and maybe get a little pen and paper and start writing down goals, start writing down what God's telling you, start writing down vision. God is ready to speak if anybody's willing to listen. The Word of God says, he who has an ear, let him hear. What he's saying is that we can actually have ears and never pay attention. Well, how do you do that? Don't you have kids? You tell them all the time to do stuff. And then they say, I didn't hear you. Well, you don't, you're deaf? Well, they're not deaf. They just weren't paying attention. And I believe that God is speaking right now to every single one of us. And he wants to download vision to us, give us inspiration, he wants to show you what your next steps are for you and your family and your future. And could it be that we're totally confused, we don't know what to do next, and it's only because we're not listening. And there's so many voices that are speaking out there. Maybe you've been turning to Facebook way too much. And I learned this just, I used to do Facebook a little bit more than I do now because I don't do it at all. But I used to look at it all the time, and, and I never felt like inspired. After I, I looked at Facebook, I always felt depressed. 
Is anybody like me? I don't know. Maybe you love it. I don't know. But me, it made me like depressed. I go, why would I want to watch, look at something that makes me depressed? And then I started seeing people from the church telling all their, all their nonsense on Facebook. And, and I go, oh, Lord. Right? Have you ever seen that? Have you ever also seen someone name somebody, but I'm not saying who it is, but you know who you are? And then I start wondering, who, are, who is it? Right? And then, and then someone starts asking a question, and everybody starts jumping in and starts, you know, it just turns into a mess. And, I, and, and not only that, it was a waste of time. While I was doing all of that, this was the problem. I wasn't hearing God. And God all that time wanted to speak to me. So in this fasting period, what we're saying is we're tuning in. Do you guys remember back in the day, day, that, your te- that we didn't have cable? Remember when we didn't have cable? How many remember before cable? That was like 20% of you guys right here. You guys are the older people already. And before they had cable or direct TV or satellite TV, they used to have just regular TVs with antennas. Remember that? And the problem with these, uh, these TVs, it didn't always catch what you were trying to listen to. Back in those days, all they had was a few channels. Like you had CBS was Channel 2, NBC, three, Channel 3 was just fuzz. That's all it was. <laughs> channel uh, channel uh, number 4, cha- I, mean, I don't know, if, uh, uh, Channel 4 was NBC, 5 was K- KTLA, and then 7... Seven was um, ABC, and then eight was Fuzz, and then nine was KCAL or something like that, and, and then, oh, 13 was KCAL. You guys not memorize scriptures. Come on. <laughs> 11 was KTTV, and 13 was what you said. <laughs> and then after that was the, um, not the UFC, the UHF or something like that, channels, and those were all fuzzy. But this would, this would happen when you couldn't catch a channel, you would have maybe one of your kids hold the, 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 the antenna. And if they got it just right, you just, just hold on to it. I know it's a half hour, so just for a half hour, earn your living. Come on now. You guys remember that? Or you put foil, foil on the, the foil, right? Just trying to catch it. Leave it, leave it right there, right there. Oh, you messed it up, man. You had it perfect. You messed it up. So what does that have to do with this sermon? I think we're like that old TV, that we're not really tuning in properly. And the message is still fuzzy. And what fasting does, it begins to clear it all up. One word of God can change your entire life. One word of God can change your business, can change your perspective. One insight. This week, we met with the mayor of San Bernardino. And um, he was asking us, we have a homeless problem across California. He was asking us, what do you think? What are your answers? And because we hear from God, we have a lot of answers. And he was so excited after we gave him the answers. He said this, we got to meet again. At, we got to meet at six weeks again because we have, I just, I see we have some answers today. It was last week we had another meeting. They have a suicide problem and dropout rate in San Bernardino. So our youth pastor went over there and met with the mayor too. And this is what's happening. There's a thirst for knowledge, a thirst for wisdom. Gabriel went over there and, and this is his first time talking to the mayor and talking to, to all the city officials. Gabriel was super nervous. He's from the hood of San Bernardino. He was tagging just a few years ago all through San Bernardino. And and Gabriel said, what should I tell him? I go, just tell him the true story. And he started telling him, I was a tagger, and I know all the tagging crews in this whole city. He goes, but God changed my life. I was a high school dropout, but God changed my life. And we have some answers for the teens. And you know what happened? Because we're tuning in. They said, we're going to give you a list of every single teenager in our whole school district that's, dropping, that's dropped out and every single one of them that are depressed, and I want them to meet with you. You know what they did after that? They said this. 
We're going to give you all the parks in the whole city, and we want you to start our sports program there. What's going on? There's a thirst for the voice and the wisdom of God. The world is looking for answers, and Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is what he says. If any one of you lacks wisdom, let him ask, and I shall freely, he will freely give it to you. We as Christians should be in demand in 2020, not because we're the smartest, it's because we're the most tuned in. And since we're tuned in to our God that's omnipresent and all-powerful, all come on, and all-knowing, we should get some insight to help the people that need some help in this world. Come on, let's tune in and put a demand on our lives. Are you ready to grow in wisdom this year? So what areas can we grow in? I'm going to give you just two quick areas. Number one, we need to grow in being spirit-led. And this is a little review from Wednesday night, but this, I thought it was so important to mention it again. We need to grow in being spirit-led. Jesus was led by the Spirit. Let's look at Matthew 4.1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit. Was Jesus led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil? That word led is a Greek word, anago, and this is what it means, to lead up or bring into a higher place. What can we learn about this word being led? That if we're led by God's Spirit, He will always lead us to a higher place. He'll always bring us to a higher place. The Holy Spirit or God's leadership or God's Word will never take you to a lower place. He's always taking you to a promotion. I'm not saying that you won't go through trials, but at the end of the trial, you will, you, he'll take you to a higher place. Does anybody want to get to a higher place in your life, in your thoughts, in your relationships, in your business? What we need is to be led by the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit will always lead us to a higher place. In Proverbs 4, 18, it says this. The path of the righteous is like the dawn of day, shining brighter and brighter until midday. Can you see the pattern? It gets brighter and brighter. The path of the righteous. So when the Holy Spirit lead, is leading us on the right path, this is what's going to happen. These will be the results. Your life will get brighter and brighter if the Holy Spirit is leading It'll get better and better. It means it'll become more firm, more established. That means your marriage, if the Spirit of God's leading your marriage, your marriage will become stronger. It'll become more firm. If the Spirit of God is not leading your marriage, your marriage will not become stronger or more firm or more established. Either, either our life is becoming a wreck or our life is becoming restored. And if we follow God's lead, you'll see a pattern. It'll go from one level to another level. This year will be better than last year. I'm going to have more joy this year. I'll walk in greater love this year. I'll see more growth this year. God is saying the path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter. Maybe today, this is your answer. You've been in this, you've been, in, you've been going through this life, and you're wondering, when is it going to turn around? And maybe you've been hoping on luck, and you should have been hoping on a process. Maybe today, this is what you need, change your leader, or maybe change the path that you've been on. There's a path that leads to brighter days. And I love this. This year is going to be a bright year. And it's going to be brighter and better and stronger than last year. If you believe that, give the Lord a hand. So that's right. That's why I'm here today. That means more prepared to do something greater. 
If we follow the Lord, you know what he does? He gets us ready. Following the Lord is a process. You cannot follow the Lord without learning and growing. So he gets us ready to do greater things. God is getting us ready right now. Your best days are not a year ago or in your past. We need to stop living in the past and understand God is not impressed with your past. God is impressed with your future. Some of us have given up already because you're too enamored with your past. It's time to start singing a new song. Get a new vision in your life and let God lead you there. I know yesterday might have been a good day and maybe 20 years ago you love how awesome you were, but it's 20 years gone by and there's been no change and there's no growth and God is saying, that was good then, but it's not good enough now. I'm taking you to a higher place, to a promotion, to a better place. It's time for us to start expecting more. God wants to do more ministry. That's why this year this church is going to grow. You guys believe the church is going to grow? Well, how is the church going to grow, pastor? You're going to grow. And you can't be scared of doing what you've never done. You know why some of us don't want to grow? Because when you grow, it stretches you. And you'll never grow, I want you to get this, in your comfort zone. It's comfortable right here, my little cocoon, 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 cocoon. You'll never fly in the cocoon. God created you to be more than a caterpillar. Come on, there's a butterfly in you. But you got to get out of your comfort zone. And you got to push. Push through. Get out of the egg. Come into the real world. And do you know in an egg, if a little chick is trying to get out of that egg, you can't help it. Don't help the chicken get out of the egg. Because he needs the struggle to develop strength. You know what that means? Many of us in this room, you've been dependent on people, and the people that love you have actually been hurting you. Because they're always trying to save you from your process. You get in trouble, and they're so quick to come rescue you. They might just need to let you get through a process. Son, I love you so much, but you can't be taking drugs in my house. I'm going to have to take a stand here. Oh, but, but mom, how am I going to live without you? Well, live without the drugs. And you keep taking the drugs, you're going to have to find out how to live without me. There has to be a time that you let your kids and you let people around you. It's not that you're not there to help them. You got to understand some of the help that we're giving them is not helping them. They have to get through the process so they can grow. Get ready for God to push you out farther than you've ever been. Are you ready for a stretch in your life? Are you ready for a spiritual stretch in your development? Don't quit just because it's unfamiliar to you. Don't quit because it's hard. Don't quit because you feel, oh, I can't stretch anymore. That's the straw that broke the camel's back. That's not even a scripture. <laughs> Step in. You start a process, stick it out. You go to start out the way, stick it out. You're part of a power 12, stick it out. Stop letting, that, stop letting situations and people talk you out of your process. Are you with me still? I got a few golf caps there. But the way of the righteous, like the, long, dawn, lo, like the light of dawn, shining brighter and brighter. Say it with me, brighter and brighter. Now, there's the opposite to that. If there's a path of righteousness... There must be another path. So what is that path? It's called the path of wickedness. Now in this room, either we're on the path of righteousness or we're on the path of wickedness. Well, can I just be in the middle of the road? No, there's no middle of the road. There's no middle road. It's either, Jesus said this, either you're for me or you're against me. He, he never said you were neutral. 
To be neutral is not to be for him. Either we're in or we're out. Are you married? Kind of. No. Are you married? Yes or no? And if you're kind of, you ain't doing right. I know you're all wrong. You guys get that? On or off? In or out? Black or white? No gray. Stop living in a zone that don't exist. Stop letting the devil deceive you into thinking, well, I'm just kind of. No, no, no kind of. In or out? See si or no? Right? So now, there's another path. In Proverbs 4.19, it describes it. But the way of the wicked, the way of the wicked, that word way means a road, a direction. So there's a direction of the wicked. It means habits. There's habits that are wicked habits. There's roads that are wicked roads. And if you're on a, I want you to, if you're on a course of life that's wicked, it will not lead to brighter and brighter days. Don't fool yourself. It will lead to darker and darker days. The reason we have so many, I, I, you have to get this, depression is higher than it's ever been in the history of the world. More and more people at younger ages are thinking and contemplating suicide. I've been in church for 40 years or more. Something like that. But I've never ran into so many nine-year-olds that are suicidal. You're nine years old and you're suicidal. At nine years old, you know what I was thinking about? I was still thinking about playing with Hot Wheels, playing baseball. I couldn't wait to get to baseball practice. I was leathering my glove with oil, getting it ready for my next baseball practice. I was riding bikes all through the city. I, I was in L.A. I used to live in L.A. Just ride bikes. I leave in the morning, come home at like 6 o'clock at night. My mom didn't care where I was. Where were you all? I was riding bikes, playing sports, soccer, baseball, trash digging. There was all kinds of stuff. Anybody ever trash dig? I, I used to trash dig, look for papers and all kinds of stuff in the office areas. But me and my friends would get lost treasure hunting all, to try and treasure. We used to go into fields and start digging holes and make a fort in the middle of the field. Take all day digging a hole. Man, this is awesome. Yeah, this is a, this is a cool fort. Huh? At nine years old, I wasn't thinking about killing myself. I... I didn't even care what was going on in my house. I knew my mom would make me spaghetti or have some rice and beans. We'll have something there. I wasn't concerned or worried about anything in life at nine years old. But what's happening with our society today? We as parents have been on a path of wickedness. And the sad thing is we've passed on our wickedness to our children. And now they're experiencing the repercussions of us as parents being on the wrong path and they're taking on weight they shouldn't be taking on. We should make it easier for our kids, not harder for our kids. And one of the ways we make it easier for our kids is we make up our minds. It might be difficult to live on a straight and narrow, but, it, but this straight and narrow is going to produce kids that have a future that is brighter than my future. That next generation is more on fire than I am. Either your kids are going to become more wicked than you or more righteous than you. It all depends what we pass on to them. And you say, Pastor, is it too late? It's not too late. We can start right now to turn the tide. We need to make up our minds which path we're going to be on, not just today, but let's talk about 50 Sundays from now. Are we still going to be in position on the path of righteousness and showing our kids this is what we do. We serve God. We put God first every single Sunday, every single day. This is not a Sunday thing. This is a 24-7 thing, seven days a week thing. Come on. Is there anybody ready to sell out and say, I'm on this path and I'm in it? 
And I'm not going to be talked out of the path. Discouraged out of the path. Stop waiting for quick fixes. See, this is what we want to do. We want to, we want to like do whatever we want to do, and then when there's a problem, we want to fix. We come to church two Sundays in a row. It's not fixed yet. Que paso? God says, I can't even, it's not that I can't fix it. You have to understand, you're concerned about me fixing a problem, and you don't realize the, the, you don't realize the root of the problem is you. And until I fix you, I can't fix the problem. Is that right? God's not concerned about giving you a shortcut. He's concerned about you going through a process and becoming a new person with a new legacy, with a new way of thinking, with a new character, with a new moral, new morals, new thinking. That takes time. You get saved in a moment, but you get transformed through a lifetime. You understand that? That's why I go to church every Sunday. Why do I go to church every Sunday? I got to learn. That's why I open up the word every day. Why? Because I got to learn. I, 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 every moment that I'm not in the house of God, I'm not allowing God to transform me. And I need a lot of transforming. I don't know about you. I got issues. I've been going to church 40 years, and I still act like a fool a lot of times. Anybody else like me? Getting mad for nothing. The other day, yesterday I went on paintballing for the first time in my life. And they have rules. I don't want to obey none of the rules. I still have issues. I want to do what I want to do, how I want to do it. So yesterday, that one of the rules is you can't even lift up your mask while you're out there because you get, you get shot in the eye and then you don't have no eyes. So, so what I did, I walked on. I'm walking right onto the field where all the shooters happened. I took my, cam, my, my thing off. And the girl said, she's, she's, she's 20 some years old talking to me. <laughs> hey, you put on your mask. If you take it off one more time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you off the, uh, off the field. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> so after we shoot each other and we're we're done and all this stuff's happening, this is what this is what the this is what I do. We're done. I'm tired. I ain't paying attention. I put my mask up again. Not on purpose. It was just a habit. How did I develop this habit? And it was only my first time. I don't know how I did it. She goes, "Hey, you." Oh, yes? Didn't I tell you to keep your mask on? And, the, and who did, were you paintballing with? A whole bunch of people from church. It was a church event. I'm the only one getting in trouble. How embarrassing is that? I got issues. So why'd you take off your mask? I, I don't know. I just I wasn't paying attention. I put it on. I was tired. She goes, get off the field. So there's 30 of us, and they're all watching me. Ah, pastors on time out. <laughs> so they sent me to a principal's office, basically. And you need to go over there, and they're going to read you the rules again. Maybe you could get it this time. And it's a long walk, too. They're over to have a fun, and I'm on timeout. The pastor's on timeout. So one of my members is over at the principal's office. I don't know what they call it, but it's the office. And she goes, are you the one that's, that keeps taking your mask off? I go, yeah. <laughs> Why do you keep taking on your mask off? I, the first time I wasn't thinking, I was, uh, and then the next time I wasn't thinking. <laughs> he goes, she goes, Okay. Here's the rules, and she reads it to me. But you know what's crazy? In the principal's office is my youth pastor. And, and I'm getting reprimanded in front of him, and he's getting, he's getting his, um, he's getting a mask, of, he's fogging up, so he's getting a new mask, and I'm in there. She goes, what are the rules? And she reads them to me. She goes, look, if you do it one more time, you're not going to be able to go in and play anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I 
That's why I need to come to church. Your pastor has some serious issues. Can't even listen to that little rule. Could, aren't we a lot like that? In so many areas. And you know what happens? Is we're not even thinking. We're just living life and we don't realize that we're doing things that could make us blind. We're doing things that could ruin our lives forever. I'm not mad at them because I understand if I get hit in the eye, I'll be mad at them that they didn't let me know. I couldn't take off my, I didn't know I couldn't take off my mask. No, they're saying, look, if one of those, one of those little pellets hits your eyes, you could be blind for the rest of your life. When God gives us the word, you might think, oh, there's no big deal. But understand, one mistake, one, I would say, one decision to not listen to this word and stay on the wrong path can ruin your life or get, I want you to get this, can ruin your eternal destination for eternity. These instructions we must fear and understand. Not fear, and it says, I'm so, I'm so scared of you, God, I can't, I can't be around you. This is what he said. We should respect the word of God that is true, and God, I'm going to adjust my life to your word because I can't afford to continue ruining my life and everyone that's with me. I'm ready to get on the path of righteousness. Is there anybody getting ready to get on that path? So there's another way. It's, it's the, way of, or the, it, the way of the wicked. It is like the darkest gloom, Proverbs 4.19. They don't know what makes them stumble. What is the scripture saying? Is that when we're on this path, we're stumbling. We're failing. Things aren't working out. But this is the problem. We're so blind, we don't even know how to fix it. Like, I don't even know why I'm in this cycle over and over and over. And it seems like life doesn't change. I, I'm getting for, I go forward a few steps, I fall. I go backwards. I fall. It's the way of the wicked. This is what it's saying. There is no real spiritual progress. They don't advance. They don't grow. They don't get insight. Do you know some of the problems that we have today, God is not going to deliver us from? We got to grow. We got to grow through it. That means we got to grow bigger than the problem. God, you want God to fix the problem? And God says, no, let me grow you. And when I grow you, the problem gets fixed. You guys understand that? Come on. Let's get this. Habits. It means, the way it means habits, way, course of life, morals. Habits. Habits. And it leads to darkest gloom. So this is, the, the way of the wicked is like the darkest gloom. They don't know what makes them stumble. It's the darkest gloom. This is what it means. Depression, hopelessness, deep discouragement. In this fast this is what we're saying. Holy Spirit, lead my life so I can have a brighter day. Lead my family. How do we let God lead us? He leads us through his Holy Spirit, and he leads us through his word. Every day, look at the instructions. Follow them. That's what's going to happen. You're going to get stronger, more established, wiser, and more prepared for what God wants to do in your life. God is ready to do more in your life than he did in your past. But for some of us, or all of us in this room, we are in a time of massive preparation. It's not easy. Stay in the process. Don't just start, follow through. Next week, be here. Impartation, be here. You haven't just started in the way, start at the way. Leadership University, get prepared for your future. Your family's dependent on it. Society's dependent on it. Your relatives are dependent on it. Your marriage is dependent on it. This is the time. This is very simple. I am not going to be on the path of wickedness. And I'm choosing to be on the path of righteousness. I am done with that old way of living. And I'm ready for my trends to change. And I'm ready to go to the process. How many received that word from God today? How many received that word from God today?
Awesome. Let's all stand up. If this message has been a blessing in your life and you would like to show support, please comment, like, share, and subscribe or click the link below so that you can contribute to our ministry. Thank you and God bless.